Um, we're going to try to get this first part of the meeting done by before 7 so that we can set up for the budget meeting. So if we could try to get it wrapped with executive sessions and everything within the hour. Um, five minutes a session. Yeah. Shoot for five minutes. Okay, so let's see. So first, uh, public comment comes first. Is there any public comment? All right. Save some time there. <laughs> Woo, that was about five seconds. All right, so uh, <laughs> consent, consent agenda. Um, we can't, I don't think we can, we can't approve anything oh, yet. we can't so do any minutes, so we're gonna go to board um, comment. Board comment, any board comment? Okay, hearing none. Um, how many seconds was that? Three. <laughs> uh, reports to the board. Superintendent's report. Uh, just a couple things. One is that we did meet last Friday with four candidates for special ed director to replace Deb Matthews, and uh, I'm checking references on three of the four, um, hoping to narrow it down. Um, perhaps I won't be bringing two I, to the board on Monday night. I, I may only bring one um, uh, because I started checking references today and I may need to just do that. So um, if the board ch you know, changes and wants more of a selection to look at, that would be fine, but I expect that I'll have somebody to bring to the board on Monday night. Um, the other thing is uh, we are hoping that after the break to be able to move into the restorative classroom space uh, in Bethel. Um, we have to do some light carpentry work there and mostly it's safety things. Uh, hiding pipes that are hot. Uh, we took down a couple ceiling fans and there's going to be some paneling put up in a in one of the uh, spaces there. Um, and maybe putting a, a tile square or uh, carpet squares down. Uh, but we hope that it could be ready and we would be able to. We have a, a waiting list of some kids that need to use it. And uh, so there's some need to get that done. Pretty much everything else is uh, budget-related preparation. Uh, we're going to spread out uh, <coughs> on the night of your meeting. Um, I think Deb Matthews and I will be coming to your meeting, Tara, for a little while, and then she's going to head to FBUD, and Mary Ellen Simmons will probably go to Sharon, because they all meet at the same time. And uh, so we're kind of dividing and, and going out. <laughs> Any questions? I, I do have a letter of resignation to share with you. Um, I can do it <coughs> now, or I can do it um, at the end of the meeting. Yeah, I don't want to really do it until we get a quorum. Yep. Okay. <coughs> so, Tara, when it comes to the um, the budget meeting, what part? What time do you think you'll be swinging through the rud? Um, F bud starts at seven, so I'll have to leave here by six thirty to get there. Okay, so you'll be with us for the first year. half hour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay. That's all, all right. I have. Any discussion? Any questions? Um. Business manager's report. So what I just passed out to you is the budget to actuals as of December 31st. So the first page is the revenue, and then the remaining pages are the expenditures. So as of December 31st, <coughs> we still have not collected 3.3 million of revenue, and as of December 31st, there was still 2.1 million available in your expenditure budget. But as you saw in your February expenditure reports that were issued, 
that obviously went down in January and February. So this was just as of December 31st. This this 3.128757 does not include all the salaries have already been encumbered, correct? Yes, the encumbrances are on there, mm -hmm. right here, FY1920 encumbrances. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't include payroll? It's not any projections or anything right. about what was left. It's purely as of December 31st, operating statement. I, I see right that the HRAs and all the benefits are encumbered as well. Some of them are. I, I don't believe they are. I wouldn't say that they are fully encumbered okay. in any way, shape, or form, but there are a few that were encumbered based on invoices that have been received. Okay. So as you all know, we've curtailed spending since probably November, early November, We're hoping to hold the line. as much as we can. I don't think anybody's complaining, are they? No, but here in a couple uh, comments and get them. Uh, that was the time up on Bruce, sir. So. Mm -hmm. Especially in the field trips budget for the high school. What about the field trips budget? Uh, there are some, some field trips requests that have been made and I've been scrutinizing them and don't know that they just they, they weren't budgeted for per se uh, they would be new things that we would have been adding this year mm -hmm. uh, and given the freeze uh, I've asked for more justification for doing them than what I've gotten to date um, so I mean last year we kind of green lighted everything uh, and you know that contributed to us going over budget a little bit not a lot but So on the revenue side, do we expect all of the what's we what, of the three point three million? You know, do we expect most of that to eventually come in, or I guess, I mean, I guess the biggest one is that Ed spending grant. Uh, yeah. So the Ed spending grant is not paid out again until April. Yeah. And I don't know when. Do you collect taxes once or twice a year? Maybe four times a year. Four times. Okay. So we just did um, as of today. So you'll get more revenue coming in from the Ed spending fund and then local taxes. Okay. Um, the Medicaid money is not coming in. We'd already discussed that. So that 60000 is not coming. Mm -hmm. um, driver's education, I just submitted Saturday um, the fall driver's ed reimbursement that Tim dropped at my office. So there'll be some revenue coming in. It's very small amounts. Um, and then state aid for transportation, that will get paid out to you at the end of the fiscal year. And then the tech center on behalf, again, just remember that's a wash. It's an expenditure and a revenue, so it cancels itself out. It's just the way we have to break it down for the AOE. So some of it will definitely All right, any other? And, oh, one more yeah. thing I wanted to mention. Um, on the roofing project, mm -hmm. in January, that did get moved from the general fund to the building reserve fund. So that will be reflective on the expenditures. Not on this one, but on the expenditure report. That cost for that got taken out of the general fund and put where it needed to be. So that has been taken care of. Move from general fund to where? The building reserve fund, where it was okay. supposed to be taken from to be paid. Okay. All right, and uh, principal's report. Anything you guys want to add to? We have some printed copies of people Oh. Get a chance to look at it online. I'd love to. They are. Yeah, and some of this was written before some things happened. So last Friday we had uh, 
Alex Chevron Benet, Benet uh, in for uh, trauma training uh, with both staffs combined over in the cafeteria at Bethel. Uh, and the feedback I've gotten since then has been very positive. Uh, I think there's a lot of practical tips. Uh, people appreciated what we were doing there. That was positive. Um, this afternoon, uh, the high school faculty council met. And we worked out our dates for events between now and the end of the school year. Uh, one of the thing dates that hadn't been set uh, until an hour and a half ago was the date of the eighth grade open house. That's the recruiting event that we put an ad in the paper for and send out postcards about uh, where we invite folks from Chelsea, Tunbridge, et cetera, all over the SU to, to come and meet staff and have a meal with the wonderful cafeteria food here. Um, and uh, convince everybody what a great place this would be to bring their kids next year. So that's in the works. Um, I think there was one other date. The, the school play, if you put that on your calendar, uh, has been moved back a week uh, to the first weekend in April. It was supposed to be the last weekend in May uh, when we lost the two snow days. Um, last weekend in March. It was, right, the last weekend in March. It's now the first weekend in May. Um, was a change. Uh, we had a little delay. We, we tried to save a couple hundred bucks by going with a less reputable uh, script provider. Uh, and their procedures are two to three weeks to get scripts out, uh, as opposed to turning around orders once they arrive. So kids were working uh, off of kind of makeshift scripts until just last week. Uh, so that also factored into our decision to push that back a week. So you're just for clarification, it was supposed to be the last weekend in March, but now it's going to be the first weekend in April? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yep, or May. First no, he's, he's April. I said May. I said March, April. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so the actual dates of the spring musical are April 3rd and April 4th. I would also add that we had a PTO, Principal Jamie Rainbow, puts on the spelling bee on the Bethel campus, and we did that on last Friday. And Aubrey McKenzie will be representing um, the Bethel campus for the cool. state PTO. Uh, so that's exciting. And it's I Love to Read Week in Bethel and the elementary school. And we are decorating doors and having secret readers come in, except for when there are state troopers and there's bathrooms, then they don't show up. But otherwise, there's lots of secret readers happening. and. Drop everything and read happening, and tomorrow we're going to dress up like our favorite book characters. Um, just a quick question: uh, Why did the Valentine's Day dance end early? On my, I, I just had junior, one. Junior class sponsored the dance, yeah. and I believe that the juniors who were supposed to help set up. Uh, maybe as many as half of them did not show up to help set up. And so a very small handful of, of kids did the set up and they were, I think, afraid of being stuck with the breakdown and not wanting to spend an hour uh, mm -hmm. until 11 to do that by themselves. So largely kind of a learning experience for the, the junior class and hopefully that helps prepare them better for that upcoming prom. I know they had some students wanting their money back or a percentage of. Uh, I took care of everybody who asked me about that at the end of the night. You yeah, did. So, um, there were some kids who got refunds. Yeah. Yeah, they did. I won't say anything to my son. They wanted twenty percent back. Let them keep the money. Well, there, there were one or two students who came in from the bowling tournament, right. uh, which ended at about. They got back by eight thirty or quarter to nine. Oh, so you got there right so, when the dance so was. Wasn't right to be charging them any money to Absolutely. come in and have a thing end in a half hour. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you know, it was it was well attended. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, maybe as many as half of the school student body was there. Uh, over forty percent was there. Um, and uh, you know, th they were there at quarter to seven, and you know, big crowd waiting to get in. So it was it wasn't a you know, kind of situation where people are fashionably late and wanting to stay to the very end. Yeah. Uh, some kids had actually started to leave around nine o'clock, and uh, yeah. I don't know how much that might have factored into the decisions. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you, it didn't just get shut down because of something that was happening. But it was no, yeah, it was, it was yeah. nothing negative. It was more the personalities of the kids who were doing it, 
DJ yeah. and it just kind of like, yeah. It, you know, and, and the other piece was, uh, I, I think because it was Valentine's Day dance, semi-formal theme, yeah. there were a lot of slow songs, uh, but the majority of kids weren't there to slow dance. Um, and they, they dance pretty hard. Uh, I mean, it's a pretty physical activity. Uh, and so by nine o'clock, the combination of slow songs and all the sweating and aching feet, uh, a lot of kids had stopped dancing. And so, again, the organizers were like, well, if nobody's dancing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was disappointing a little bit, though. Yeah. It, yeah, anyways. Yeah, my son was like, yeah, pick, us, pick me up at like quarter 10. No, pick me up at nine. <laughs> Just change like overnight. Yeah. We had, we had kids who hung out. I think most of the kids who hung out until 10 enjoyed themselves for the most part. So mm. it wasn't too much outrage. Fortunately. All right, action items. Okay. Or anything more for the principal's report? Can we talk some more about the preschool? I saw it on here, they all have an update. Mm. So it says, it says you all met with the preschool coordinator, and then you all talked about how Sharon Elementary is providing. Um, so it said, decided that the next logical step was to explore summer programming options. So what does that mean? So it's the idea of um, having preschool services in the summer um, at either <coughs> one or the other campus or at both campuses, um, which is why we want to survey parents um, to see what the needs were and what the interest was. And then simultaneously, um, Jan, who works at Central Office, is going to talk with uh, you know, HR and payroll and see, you know, what would it cost to have this staffed and what would we need to charge um, to make it feasible. For the summer? Right. Mm -hmm. What about next school year? I think like, we got to get through April 15th, which is the screening. The screening. Right. right. Mm -hmm. About that. That's the plan, at least. So after the April 15th screening, you'll know what, how many students are we'll wanting a better to Better idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether we need two classrooms in Bethel or one. Are all of you still on board with this? Uh, I think so. I mean, I mean, we're still talking. And so, part of the screening going to be like a question about if people are interested in like extended preschool. And so, will that be? And a already, question? when people have been registering, at least in Bethel, uh, the word's gotten out that we offered full day for three-year-olds if with extra. Pay, and so some people are already expressing their interest, and they said, well, we got to see who shows up, but good to know you're interested. But that includes, like, potentially aftercare, too, or? Not yet. we got to figure no, it out. No, not yet. So that's why um, the first um, option we wanted to try was <coughs> summer services to see, you know, do people want this? Can we find qualified staff who pass the preschool regs who want to work at these extra hours um, and to see how that goes in the summer before we try doing it during the school year. So it's really going to require surveying the current <coughs> preschool students and the incoming preschool students. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. I think that a lot of people ask me about, you know, are we going to be offering any type of care beyond the normal end of the school day, 3 o'clock? Uh, for next year, so I don't and, know. And part of the research that we'll do for the summer um, option, it'll let us know, you know, what should our fees be, what would the costs be, how many students do you need to have participate in aftercare for it to break even, um, because you know, we don't have the, it would have to pay for itself. We don't have it in the budget. Yeah. Anything else for the principal's report? Okay. Um, all right, action items. Any action items for next month that we need to put down or follow up on? That might be why Pam is here. Well, she's well, here for items. town clerks. 
Yeah, so I don't think we have any action items. Yeah. I want to see if there's any action items from past. Ah, uh, thank you. Um, I think from the November board meeting, it looks like, uh, Reed, you've already addressed the the scheduling, scheduling, so that's taken care of. But the other one was with driver's ed to get clarification on our financial responsibility for our students who go to other schools in the district students in the district that go to other schools, do you know what our obligation is for them? Yes, is we're obligated to provide driver's ed for them. Okay. Uh, I sorry, you, I, think I, I, I thought we'd saying shared that, that out somewhere. Yeah, the, yeah. the lawyers for the AOE uh, went back and looked through the statutes and uh, SU has a responsibility to provide that. Okay. Um, so, it is what it is. Um, and we have that in writing, I think? Right? We have got an email from the state, yeah. Okay. To that regard. I think I printed it and put my driver's in file. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> other action items, we might come up with some more after we've um, had the annual meeting procedures, and we'll, we'll see if we come to needing some action items. But I think that we're going to need a quorum before we can make any big decisions at this point. So either we find a way to get Andrew to come over here from the gymnasium or he should, be, he should be here any minute okay cool um, then maybe can we start with discussion items talking about the annual meeting without a quorum yeah yeah as long as you don't make any decisions all right um, so that's next on the agenda is procedures for the annual meeting and Pam would you like to <laughs> Come up and I'm talk with us. Is not here, <laughs> Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing um, this year we would just like to do. I'm Pam Brown. I'm Tom Clark and Bethel. For those of you that don't know me, um, is this to try and figure out a more cohesive way of doing it? Um, and Carmen and I are working with our BCAs on doing just that. I mean, we're gonna have a meeting and we're gonna try and get things figured out and stuff. Um, I think there was some confusion about what the school district clerk, mm -hmm. the role of the school district clerk. You think? I think. <laughs> I'll confirm uh, that. Yeah, I, I, I'll confirm that too. I mean, <laughs> the last two minutes, yeah, they, <laughs> Tammy, I did not mean to put you in the spot. You said, it was just, it was, yeah. <laughs> You're good, you're being polite, thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, it, the school district clerk's role is to like collect petitions, put together the Australian ballots, do the piece of death like that or whatever, my understanding of it all, and that, that's what we got from the Secretary of State's office. Um, and the school district is clerk is, is yeah, our attorney, it's, which yeah. I have to hand yeah. out yeah. also. <laughs> School um, district clerk is the one that gets uh, voted on uh, at the annual meeting. Exactly, which is yes. Tammy. Yes. Okay. Um, Currently, but next year it will be. Pammy. Next year, I think it's going to be. Um, Carmen and I are talking about which one's going to do what. So we're going to okay. Be out. The only issue that happens is on town meeting day. School district meeting is not an issue. That that annual meeting is always a night other than town meeting day. But on town meeting day, <laughs> the school directors are voted on by Australian ballot, and that is in your. Well, states of origination when you get your and they need to be counted. And this year, my understanding is they're going to be counted at the superintendent's office. Two BCA members from Royalton and two BCA members from Bethel are going to take the sealed boxes there, and that has to be with the school district clerk. So that's you this year, dear, <laughs> because unfortunately, as town clerks, and if either Carmen or I get voted as that school district clerk, it's going to have to do something different. So the only thing would be would be to think about this and how it can happen for next year on your warning is to put an article about I'm not sure how to word it, but it's like changing your article of origination into where ballots can be counted in each individual town overseen by the town clerk and then met the next day to do that piece of it. I, I they have to be co mingled now? Right now, they're commingled. Because it's a union district, it's commingled. And that's the only piece of it. 
Because that's in the articles of origination, that's how it's worded. My understanding of it. So it's just something we need to look at definitely before next year, um, that piece of it. So, I mean, that's it. But um, we're just going to kind of try and do one unified way of voting between the two towns. Because we're not Bethel way of voting anymore and Burleson way of voting anymore. We're one unified district and we have to do that piece of it. If we were to make a, a, an attempt to change this, uh, to, to have a warning to change it in a different way, would that, that would require a special meeting sometime during the calendar year? I'll check with Dina. I'm not okay. sure, yeah, but I'm I don't find out what sure. the semantics are behind it and yeah. see what our options are. Because right. if it yeah, makes sense that the ballots can be counted where the meeting is being held that year, yeah. then it just... Um, the other piece would be, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously Royalton does all their other town stuff by Australian ballot, and we have presidential primaries happening. And she, this mother, so she's got four different things that she's counting this year. Yeah. I'm doing two. <laughs> I like the idea we have our open town meeting. Mm -hmm. thing, so. But it's just that part of it. It would just have to be like a couple of Bethel BEC members coming to Royalton and co-mingle them in Royalton under whoever happens to be the clerk at that Whoever's the clerk at that point in time is where they should be counted. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work out that we can do the separate pieces of it. Mm -hmm. We have talked to elections office um, and secretary of state, and it seems like it could be, but then, okay. then we have the legal terms of it all, the legal process of it all. So, that's so that kind of the only gist of what we were kind of looking for tonight, but and definitely after the annual meeting and after your everybody's, you know, whoever's on board, we would love to come back and visit things mm -hmm. for next year. So an action item is actually to find the correct, um, come up with some language or a proposal yeah, the, yeah. And, and talk with Dina and find out how we could actually do this. Yes, just and to let you know where, what, we're, what we're thinking, what really kind of should happen in that piece. Yeah. Just, that piece just, you know. And I think it would be nice if we had this all figured out at least six months in advance so that we don't oh, yeah. have to like get in the weeds of this in the midst of doing budgets and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we can give ourselves a... An, a, a, a timeline or a goal to have it done by a certain date once mm -hmm. we know a little more, but we'll just make sure that that, it, that stuff stays on as an action item so we can keep checking in on it. And um, we're more than happy to come back and talk to you whenever at any point in time. Okay, so, so for, for town meeting day when the Australian ballots are happening, mm -hmm. Um, Tammy's been able to designate the task to somebody else. Is, I mean, as clerk, she can designate. She doesn't have to be the one doing it, right? There's she nobody has, else that's going to be able to be there to do that. It has to be done under the school district clerk's um, piece of it. Because she designated somebody else to do that. It would have to be one of Carmen or I. Uh -huh. And there's no way we can leave the polls once we're back county ballots. We can't. Body and Bethel, body and Royal Ten, mm -hmm. and they have mm -hmm. other business to count yeah. in those proximities. And so, two BC, BCA members, two BCA so members traveling in their authority. cars to go to supervisory union, union at yep. present time, mm -hmm. um, and show up at supervisory union with the box. Yep, and, and they're going to count them all down. together, and then they're going to count but them from there. Like next year. Next year, we'll, yeah. It's adding a presidential election, all that, this makes yeah. it a little bit more chaotic and it does. Not navigatable. Very chaotic. Mm -hmm. So, why are we going to the supervisory union instead of just having, you know, Bethel go to Royalty and Royalty? That's what your article say. Because, unfortunately, that was in the warning. So, what we're going to In the warning piece of it, that they were going to be moved, they were going to go to the supervisory union office and they were going to be counted there. Co was that them. for. Um, just for the school directors. School directors, but was that for the first year or was for for? That was on this year's warning. I'm not yeah, sure. it's on the bottom of this. this oh, the warning for this year. Yes, okay. the warning for this year. Got it. All right. So we're the, just to, what we're, we're talking about is we're finding a way to amend it for for next year. Fix it first. So it's on the it's on the action item list. Uh, Going to get some information from Dina, Pam. Is going to be working on. Pam and Carmen are going to work on some proposed. I mean, would it make sense just to have the clerk be whatever the, uh, so we just nominate whatever. the clerk from the town that it's going to be held in, and then that clerk can delegate if they want. But that way we don't have any confusion about where the petition goes to or any of that stuff. It's whatever the town that the board meeting is going to be in, that, that clerk. That clerk will be the clerk for that year. Yep. That is something that's coming in. Yeah, that, 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 
seems very reasonable because yeah. each year we switch back and forth. Right. And but that doesn't address the ballot issue, ballot counting issue, correct? The ballot counting issue is the point that somebody's going to have to go from one school to the other school to be with that person. Right. Whoever happens to be the board clerk, the, the school district clerk, not school board, school district clerk, whoever's voted, whoever happens to be, if it's me from Bethel, royalty people are going to have to come to Bethel. Right. If it's current from royalty, <laughs> Right. And Unless that's we do up to our BCAP, that's what we can do. That. Yeah. And that ballot counting is just for re-election of board seats. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, just counting the Australian ballots as it is done through. And um, my understanding is the Royalton assistant clerk, Rita, has got a tally sheet all done up for the exam. Thank you, Rita. She's already my friend. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So. And so sorry that you have to. Hey, we're all, we're all learning and we are yeah, fostering right. an environment of such. And we're, this is a big learning curve. You, there is nothing in, like, a, the unified school district statutes are still, as far as things go, we, 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 they're there, yeah, they're, yes. So we would. I'm just trying to think about, what was just about, you know, the whole sequence of things. Would it be, would it be, just a solution, a temporary solution for this year, or would it really be a temporary solution for two years? I just wondered, like, if we put it in the articles to decide, you know, how the votes will actually get counted, if we put it in the articles for next year, if the people vote on it the night before at the annual meeting. It would end up happening, happening in the next year. So, so, whoever it's say, going so for the next two years, we're going to have a. Well, we could have a special meeting, like, in July or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, so unless, I don't think anybody would care, you know, like, it wouldn't be a big. No. I just had an email to Dina asking her what the procedure. procedure is to get this changed. So yeah. we'll, we'll see what Dina comes back with. Yeah. All right. Andrew, since you're here and you're, yeah. do okay. you want to start? We're on 9.2 annual meeting planning. So do we call the meeting to order? Oh, 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 yeah, the meeting's been, <laughs> we call we're order, already, but we just have Pam, do you have, have, you have the notes, you have the minutes right there? Nine, or the, we have the voted on minutes right there. What the election yeah, we haven't done each person's responsibilities hey, are. You think you're good with that? Yes. Um, in the meantime, we got our first foster placement today, and we've been waiting all day for him to arrive, and he's due to arrive in like half an hour. So I have to go home. Oh. <laughs> so so should we um, go ahead and do an executive session? So we'll just move it to the next. Oh. We'll see if it's still an issue. Move it to the next? Yeah, it's fine. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we could do it quickly now if you want. No, it's okay. We'll right. figure it out. Okay, sorry. All right. Good luck. Good luck. Thanks. Chris, can you give me a hand? Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, great. It'll be discussed next week. Thank you very much. We still have two executive oh, sessions, but that one's no longer. So, okay. We're on um, 9.2 annual meeting planning. Okay. Uh, do we want to go back and approve minutes and that stuff? Yeah, yeah, we could now that we've got a form. All right. I'm trying to get everything done in the next 20 minutes, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can resume. <laughs> Suspend the meeting and then resume it after. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's true. Um, all right, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Or are there any <laughs> discussion or amendments? Um, I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second it. <laughs> approve the minutes as written for both. Yeah. January 21st, 2020, and January 24th, 2020. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The minutes are approved. Okay. So do we want to go on to 9-2, annual meeting planning? What was... Well, no, we just got, we covered procedures for the annual meeting, but annual meeting planning itself, um, I mean, I didn't create the, I, I, I assume we're talking about the meat and potatoes of the annual meeting? I guess. Um, 
since Lisa's not here, I'm not really sure exactly what she had in mind, but I could tell you that at least uh, to promote the annual meeting, um, we've got we've got childcare and uh, there's going to be a spaghetti dinner um, prior to the meeting as a fundraiser for the um, Yellowstone Park field trip with middle schoolers. So um, Miss Williams is going to be sending me some more publicity for that one. She's got her final details and and then we'll work on getting the promotion out for they're going to do child care and a spaghetti dinner and probably have some I don't know if they're going to have any other snacks or whatever um, for the meeting but we'll we'll get the word out for that to let people know okay. about all that stuff before and during the meeting so people have access to child care and know that there's a meal um, Great. And Lisa, um, yeah. if that's sent to one of the principals either on either campus, we can send it out via Blackboard to everyone? Absolutely, and yeah. Yeah, and put it in the, so we'll try to get that done sooner than later because I want to get it in the paper too. I know that we have a placeholder at least for the annual meeting in the calendar of the newspaper and it's gotten mentioned, uh, but just to get it out there as often and as much as possible because I know last year people were confused about when the annual meeting was happening and where and we want to make sure that it's really clear and repeated over and over again. Our last school newsletter before the meeting is going out on Friday. So this Friday. Uh, this Friday. Okay. So really maybe if there was a flyer by Thursday it could be incorporated okay. into it. I'll touch I'll take touch base with Holly. Okay. Um, do we need to like have a plan for who's going to be doing the different offices as far as like treasurer and um, clerk and all that? Probably not at the annual meeting because they're not going to be the ballot, the Australian ballot voting doesn't happen until the next Well, day. but you know, we, we do the uh, nomination of the clerk for the um, nomination district. Nomination of the moderator, the oh, clerk, that. the treasurer, the salary. Right. Oh. So for the moderator, do we do, didn't we have a plan for that? Wasn't it like whatever town? Uh, but actually, um, it's just going to be Allison. I think it's just going to be Allison. Just going to be Allison. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we reelect Allison for moderator. Um, and do we decide that the clerk's going to be, I mean, I guess we haven't decided, but Pam and Carmen will talk about that. So hopefully one of them will, like Carmen would be for next year. Cause Probably it's Carmen. Be yeah. mm -hmm. And then... And then treasurer. Yeah, who's who's, who's been the treasurer? treasurer? Pam, Pam. Pam's the treasurer. Pam's the treasurer. Mm -hmm. And I assume she's okay with doing that again. Has anybody talked to her about that? We should have asked her while she was here, but we can check. Okay. Um. All right. And then that's all the ones that we need to do, right? As far as as far as running the meeting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then our presentation will be occur during number. Where did it go? Oh, five. Here and act upon the reports of the school dir district directors and officers. So the plan will stick with. Sure. Is there an action um, item for four? Article four is to fix the salaries. Oh. Anybody else need a copy of this? Yes, yeah, so it was in there. I was looking on my phone. Yeah. Where? Keep that the same. Any help here? I mean, I'm okay. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Do you guys have one? Oh, yeah, no, we didn't talk about, did we want to... Oh, good. Right. Did we at one point talk about, do we want to try to do the presentation, like, at the top of the meeting before we move into the different articles, or, or I don't know, because got, things got sort of sideways last year. Right. right. There was some, I thought, um, or we people were saying okay. that the report of the school district director is not so much what was in the town okay. a report. And so our presentation was something separate. Okay. Um, so yeah, maybe it would make sense to do our presentation at the top and then do this stuff, or yeah, I don't know. yeah. I think we can. I think a presentation at the top is a good idea, and in, you know, introductions, presentation. Oh yeah, that's a big one. Um, so we big gotta... one. We yeah. Missed it last year. Yeah. So. And are we all set for? speakers and microphones and all that stuff. Are you talking about your actual like budget reports that you're talking 
what you presented? Because you do that in Article 5. Well, okay. Um, last year, there was some conflict over this because they were saying that the um, kind of presentation where we just do you know, talk wasn't the report that was what was in the town report, like, you know, the packet that we prepare um, and send out to everybody. That's the report that we act on, but I don't know. Maybe not. I think it's, it's all my years on the school board. Yeah, I know. It, doesn't, <laughs> it seems, yeah. Why don't we keep it where our Article 5 is? I'll, I'll still just to get some clarification. Is there any, I, I feel really uh, unprepared asking this question, but is there anything that needs to be addressed with Article 4? Are you blending Article 4 and 5 in your presentation? No, Article 4 would be, I mean. It's usually somebody makes a motion from the floor to, to set the, the, it's for the school board, it's our stipend, I guess, is, is that piece, right? Right. Right. When you say somebody, is that a board member or is that an audience member? Audience member. Right? It's uh, usually been somebody from the audience. And Allison prompts that, is that correct? <laughs> Okay. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. yeah they say we'll take a motion, and I think they mentioned that in the past it's been X amount. So I guess it's been 600 a person for the last few years. But but for what it's worth, for the for the sake of the notes, you know, we're we're going by all these articles in order. But I think before the whole meeting really gets started, before Allison really takes over, I think it'll be really good for us to say welcome to and what this is about and who's in front of you and what their roles are and how the meeting's gonna take place so that people can kind of have a warm up and know what's gonna happen. Cause it, I mean. Sure, yeah, I agree. And, and that they can know when, it, that, that we are gonna give a little bit of a presentation, right, about, I know we have our info meetings, but is there an opportunity for um, any of the principals to talk about what the school's been doing, or is that covered the in the board. report? Yeah. So that's, it's, it's that's in written form, so your principals to speak, and, and the voters have to agree if they're not community members to allow them to speak. Because right. They're not. So that's right. usually part of your presentation to the voters. Okay. At least that's the way it was always done yeah. in our district. Okay, and that's all happening at Article 5. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Um, um, so do we know if we have the speakers and microphones? Um, Owen uh, was uh, working on making those arrangements yesterday uh, with uh, Seth's daughters. Okay. Is that who we used last year? Or? That's how we always yeah. use. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He does a great job. Yeah, it was just one of the years things didn't work so well. So. Because the year we didn't have Seth's daughters. Well, we didn't have yeah. Seth's yeah. daughters. Yeah. Exactly. It didn't work well. So, so. Um, good. <clears throat> but I, 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 I guess uh, we should get an update from Owen is to make sure that was all. I just sent him an email. Okay, cool. Thank Owen's you. not here because he had some personal that he had to take mm -hmm. care of. I'm sorry. Okay. When we were at the you know meeting yesterday, we were covering all that with Owen and he was working on it, but I can't remember, you know, it sounded like it was in process. Okay. So are we, anything else for the annual meeting that we need to think about now? Um, I don't. The elected roles and each person's responsibility, that's part of the annual meeting too. So Lisa had yeah. corresponded with Dina and she, Dina had sent a response, so I printed it out for each of you to have an outline of oh, okay. the elected roles and responsibilities are. But I think we kind of went over this already with, you know, we're going to have um, Pam as a treasurer and hopefully Carmen, but they'll work it out for the clerk. And uh, yeah. okay. Allison as a moderator. So I think we can yeah. move on from that at this point. Yeah. But thank you for this clarification. Okay, <coughs> so moving on to, um, are we going back to reports to the board or? So, so we're at public comment, I don't. Yeah, we did the reports to the board. So the only yeah. thing that's left now is um, 
If there's no public comment, then we have the executive session for a student matter is not is going to be set aside for another date. But we do have two executive sessions for personnel. I can probably do one of those in public session. I don't think we need to go in because it's just a better designation. Okay. So, you ready for that? Sure. Well, let's ask if there's any public comment first. Is there any um, comment? I would recommend, um, especially since it seems like the weather may be keeping people from coming tonight, um, if we can, on our Facebook page, post some links to the uh, previous discussion from last night and whatever discussion happens tonight. Yeah. Um, because I feel like I feel like everyone in this building knows exactly where to find the Orca videos. Every once in a while, somebody will be like, oh, Bridget, I saw you. I'm like, hey. <laughs> uh, but I'm not sure if people you know, right. in the broader school community know how to find those videos. And I think to be able to say, go to the Facebook page, there'll be a link, click right on it. I think that would be helpful in, in you know, getting word out. And, wasn't recorded. No, but I took notes from last night's okay. meeting, and so once I clean those up, I can um, yep. share them and, and they could get posted. Yeah. Maybe they can go, like when the stuff gets posted on Blackboard and whatnot. Yeah. Sure. That's good. Yeah, yeah. There, was, still there was some good discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I, mean, yeah. yeah. I had one, I, I think we'll get a couple more people here. And I suppose we do have a slideshow. I don't know if the slideshow could be part of. It's not a lot to the slideshow, really. But anyway, we can make sure that that gets out there, yeah. especially if the attendance is low tonight. And you know, the, the, my rule of thumb is always is that one person asks the question and more people. <coughs> Absolutely. Sure. Yep. Okay. All right, any more um, public set, uh, comments? Hey, Peter. So I would suggest that we hold off on the executive sessions until after the information meeting, because otherwise we're kicking everybody out. And Absolutely. Do you want me to do this letter now? Before? Is it? It's not. It's just a resignation. It's not. OK. So I uh, received this letter from a, a longtime teacher here uh, in Royalton. Um, uh, to whom it may concern, please accept this as notice of my formal resignation from my position of teacher at South Royalton Elementary School, effective June 30th, 2020. After careful consideration, I've decided to retire from my teaching, from the teaching profession. I'm great, grateful to have been a part of the school community working with the children and families in, of South Royalton for the last 30 plus years. I feel it's time for me to pursue other interests. I'm grateful for all the students, families, and colleagues who have, over the years, made my work so rewarding, and it's respectfully submitted. Uh, Deb Allen. It's been here for a long time, so yeah, I would suggest maybe you accept it with deep regret, maybe. Make a motion to accept Deb Allen's resignation with deep regret. Second that. And I'll send it down if anybody wants to see it. Thank you.